Namaste, hip hop, rave, bienvenidos amigos, and welcome boys and girls from across the world. It's your man Mikey Bug coming at you with another spectacular stretch session. Today we're going to be taking it very easy, nice and slow, and the only thing you're going to need is an empty wall. Make sure there's enough space for you to spread your body parts around and that you're not knocking into anything that's on the wall like picture frames or something of the sort. As soon as you're ready, we're going to go ahead and start by standing up. And just shaking out our body. So I do apologize in advance that I have my back to you or whatever. Um, but don't worry. I, you're not going to need to be seeing my face most of the time anyway. So which I know you're going to miss. But let's go ahead and get started. Easy. We're just going to press our hands up against the wall. And then start to step back. So we can drape the head and chest right through the biceps. This would be a modified wall downward facing dog. And uh, if you can relate the two, then obviously you're, uh, you're pretty solid with your grounded down dog, the one that uh, takes place on the floor. But if not, this is just to give you an idea of what down dog should feel like. It should always feel like a, a very nice uh, upper body and upper back stretch especially. And if that's not the case, uh, we can talk about that later. But... Um, just to give you an idea, and again, to relate the two, this is one of the feelings you should be having when you're in a regular downward dog. Let's take five deep breaths, slow inhale, slow exhale. Good, really fill the belly up, four. Make that fifth breath the deepest one. Beautiful. Bringing ourselves up slowly. We're going to keep the hands as they are and the feet as they are. And we're just going to step the right foot forward. Getting into an easy lunge stretch here. So the target is right behind that left knee. Into the calf and the Achilles. And this is a great stretch if... You've been standing all day. If you're a runner, I definitely recommend it doing post runs. Let's take three deep breaths. And stepping back, we're going to switch the legs. Left foot forward, right back. And again, just try to bring your awareness into the target muscle groups that we're stretching. So behind the knee close to the hamstrings but more so in those ligaments traveling down into the calf and then the Achilles keeping our heel to the floor three deep breaths beautiful stepping our feet together we're going to turn around hey you see I told you I wasn't going to have my back to you most of the time Ah, just kidding. Um, we're going to kneel down, and we're going to utilize the wall to help us with a shoulder stretch and a pec minor stretch. So twisting, you're going to place the left hand onto the right knee, and you could either bend the elbow like I'm doing right now, or if you want to step a little further from the wall, you can go long arm and just stretch that hand behind you. I recommend putting the fingers in the opposite direction of where you're twisting. And again, the target area is just the connection between the shoulders and the chest muscles. Let's take three deep breaths here. Beautiful. Go ahead, switching to the other side. So again, just use that hand on the thigh for support. Get your hand placed in the appropriate position. And then just start opening up away from the hand. Three deep breaths. Awesome. Go ahead, release it. Give a little shake out. And then we're going to come down into a sphinx pose, but we're going to stay close to that wall, march our knees back to the edge of the wall, right where the floor meets it, and we're going to keep those knees bent as we lift into our sphinx pose, and we'll stay here for about a minute. 
So for all those looking to really increase your back flexibility, I definitely recommend utilizing the wall when it comes to a position like this because we obviously get a good bend into our spine, but it helps prepare us for other postures like floor bow pose, just creating a little bit more ability, more mobility in the spine. And even though that's tough to do, especially with the low back, the low lumbar spine, it will, it can happen, uh, you know, gradually and especially without forcing it. So I highly recommend utilizing a wall, not just for this stretch, but you're going to see how beneficial it could be for the other stretches we do too. Try to keep the chest lifted. Let's take 10 therapeutic breaths. Beautiful. Four deep inhales. Four deep exhales. On the last exhale, we're going to fold the hands on top of each other, making a pillow and resting our forehead down. Slowly letting the spine adjust. Now for this next stretch, if you do need a strap, I, I do apologize that I don't have one here to demonstrate, but... As best as I can verbally describe it, you're going to place one of the uh, the strap on the top of one of your feet, and we're going to start to pull it back for a half frog here. So we're still keeping our shins up against the wall, but now we're pulling one of the heels closer to our hips. So again, just trying to create a little bit more range of motion in our backs. And five easy breaths here. Very gently release it. You don't want to let it snap like a rubber band <laughs> slamming into the wall. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side. Now for those of you who are not using a strap, remember with half frog we can always apply a little bit more pressure by using our forearm. But if it is a challenge to get in the first place, just grab a hold of it from the outside of the foot. And with each exhale, get deeper and deeper in the stretch. Two more deep breaths. And we're gently releasing it. Fantastic. Start to scooch away from the wall. Moving into a child's pose. Knees apart, toes together. Reaching for the top of our mats. Letting those heel hips sink down to the heels. Gently pressing ourselves up and then really utilizing the wall now. So we're going to swing the legs out in front of us and we're going to sit as close to the wall as we can because this is the easiest way to get our legs up against the wall, which is the idea of what we're going into. So turn your body, still keeping your hip close to the wall. You're going to lie down onto your mat and then again, quarter turn. Getting those legs up nice and high. So we'll just stay here for a moment. This is also where we're going to be doing our Shavasana. So giving the body an idea of what it will be ready for later.
Take five deep breaths. And then we're going to slowly start to split the legs as wide as it will allow us. Whether that's the limitation of our wall or the limitation of our body, it's okay to meet our limits. Once the legs are spread, we'll stay here for again about a minute. And really one thing we have to remember with slow stretching, yin yoga, is that Everything melts. Everything is taken at a much slower pace. So even the breathing we should be conscious of to make sure that we're not doing it too quickly. No rapid breaths. Taking our time. more deep breaths. Make them as slow as you can. And then we're going to convert it into a butterfly. So keeping the knees wide, but placing the feet in together. Enjoying the stillness being okay with doing nothing and I know that's hard trust me I know and this isn't to <laughs> talk uh you know any bad bad mouthing but in America especially there's been such a glorification when it comes to the 24 7 hustle and always on the go mindset and I think we we're so caught up in the moment sometimes with it that we don't realize what happens in the long run, the long term effects of it. So we always feel guilty for slowing down. We always feel guilty for taking it easy. And that's not to say all the time, but it, for me especially, it's hard. And I have to remind myself that this is a marathon. Like Nipsey said, the marathon continues. It's a long race. And if you're trying to sprint the entire race, guaranteed by the 13th mile, it's just going to feel so hard. So take a moment of gratitude to just tell yourself, yeah, like I'm taking it easy because I deserve to take it easy. No one's going to pull ahead of me. No one's going to beat me in this race. We're all running at our own pace. That's me on my soapbox for the day. <laughs> Four more deep breaths. Maybe bring the feet down just a little lower. Awesome. We're going to bring the knees together and we're going to scooch ourselves back inch by inch just until our knees are about 90 degrees. Then we're going to step out as if we were doing a squat. So don't focus so much on how, it, how you know, externally rotated you can get here. Um, obviously, if it works better for your hips, go for it. But you are welcome to point the toes straight ahead too. Me, I'm going to settle for right at 45 degrees, right in between, straight up and straight out.
And if you want to get deeper in this, you can always scooch back towards the wall a little bit more. Because we're thinking hips here right now. Take it very gently, very slowly. Big inhales, big exhales. So heel the feet in, so they're about hips width. And then we're going to do a figure four. So right ankle on top of the left knee. Now if you scooch down for a little bit of a deeper squat, this may feel deep for you at first. So if it feels uncomfortable or hard to get into, I would recommend scooching back a bit. But if you like right where you started at, stay there and just enjoy this stillness. We're going to be here for quite a bit, so again, mentally strengthen yourself with the idea of being okay with doing nothing. Not worrying about the outcome, just focused on what's happening right now. And if your mind starts to wander, just tell yourself, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. And as we slowly release, we're going to extend the right leg up on the wall and just keep it there for a breath or two. And then we'll change sides. So right foot slides down. Left foot, be conscious if this side's tighter and you may need to scooch back a little more. The indicator that you need to scooch back is if you start to lift up in your tailbone in the sacrum. If it's too hard for you to get those things down towards the ground, not necessarily the tailbone, but definitely your sacrum, which is the flat triangular part of your back, then I would recommend just inching away from the wall. Just a scooch. And we're here for a little over a minute. Four more deep breaths. And we 
left leg extends up against the wall. And then we slide it back down next to the right. We're going to walk the feet out wide. Just drop the knees in as much as we can. Just working out a little bit of internal rotation, building some hip mobility. They don't have to be kissing right now, just a little drop in. And we go the other way, dropping them out. It's very similar to our squat, but this is almost like a combination between the squat and the butterfly lost my lost my thought there this is putting me to sleep y'all it's definitely relaxing me and i hope it's doing the same for you we're gonna inch our heels in toes to connect everything's kissing and we're gonna spread the arms out wide looking to the right as we drop the knees over to the left Back to the center, and then switch. Coming back, we're going to hug the knees in as tight as we can, take a deep, deep breath. And then exhale, extend the legs up to the wall. Let the heels rest up against it as all the blood flows in a different direction, which is nice for a change. You know, maybe you're someone who likes routine, but maybe you're also someone who's in need of switching it up here and there. And your body is exactly the same way. It may be used to a routine, but it doesn't mean that it can't benefit from some change. So. Let everything just melt slowly from your heels to your hips and your hips to your head. And enjoy this moment of stillness for the next couple of minutes. slowly start to reset wiggling your fingers and your toes 
sliding the feet down, you're going to roll to the right side into a fetal position, using the bicep as a pillow. When you're ready to press up, take a seat any way you like, either legs long to help your hamstrings, or you can do an easy pose with legs crossed. Just allow the wall to help you perfect your posture, avoiding the low back to be against it. And breathe slowly here. Hands to the heart. Friends, thank you so much for doing the counter of our regular lives and always on the go. Sometimes it's nice to just sit back, relax, and take things slow. I truly appreciate every single one of you for your happiness and your health. Now appreciate respect and always love yourself. Namaste. Well, friends, I hope that you enjoyed this session as much as I did. Remember, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave it in the comments below or uh, send me a message if uh, you got the email. Otherwise, I'll see you for the next session. Peace.